you ready for Time in the Word? Time in the Word. by Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, an on-fire bible Center teaching ministry based in Los Angeles, California, with outreach throughout the United States, stretching from coast to coast. Join us now as Pastor Chester C. Pippen Jr. brings us an exciting, anointed message. Praise the Lord. Okay, well, I have, a t I have a tape that I was thinking about showing a part of, but we'll see how that goes tonight. If there's a certain point I, get, I feel that the Lord says to play it, then we'll play it. Amen? It's another Sid Roth tape. I woke up today, and I, I just turned the TV on on my DVR, and I saw a... a um, message he had done, I mean, someone had done on the Sith Roth show. And so I, I listened to it, and it was talking about the angels. And it was so good that I just felt like, yes, let's play that if we get a chance to tonight. Amen? So you guys try to hang in there with me, okay? Don't give up on me. Work with me tonight. Okay, now I, I've had a lot of trying moments in my life, so I think a lot has been taken out of me, being a mama. And mamas know. Mamas have to coordinate so many things, don't we, ladies? I mean, men, men have their things too, but God made y'all to be focused. So you guys kind of like, it's so funny when we try to make y'all multitask. It's so funny because... <laughs> <laughs> it is because we try to... We, we, we forget that... We don't all do things exactly the same. But remember when God made male and female, though, he didn't make one gender and say, this is good, but this one, mm. He didn't do that. He said the whole thing was good. So we got to remember that when we see our differences. Because when we see our differences, we think ours is good and yours ain't all that good. And God is like, no, it's all good. Now, it can be bad if you use it wrong, but it's all good. Or the way he created it to be, it was all good. Amen. So, you know, sometimes we have to, like my husband came up um, just before, just before we left, Liz was, Liz had this to do, and I forgot when Liz focuses on something, she goes to that thing, and I was in need of her, so at the last minute, because once I do my nails, I can't, I can't do anything else from that point on, you know what I mean, so I, that's when I need her to come, so I did my nails real fast, and I was like, Elizabeth! I'm screaming through the house, and, um, you know, y'all know how big our house is, so I'm staying in the hall, Elizabeth! You know, and, and so then Liz comes running upstairs like, <gasps> and she comes, and, you know, she, she was doing the gifts, and I was like, I forgot Liz, when she focuses on something, that's where she is. And so, and, and also, you know, it was taking her time, but for me, it was like, oh, my gosh, Liz, where are you? What are you doing? What are you doing? You know, and... You know, and now that's, that's with two different women trying to multitask. Now imagine when we do that with the men. So then my husband walked in the room, and y'all know how my husband's kind of like cool and just re And so I'm the one that's like, let's go! We gotta go! You know, my husband be like, slow down. Like when we used to go, when we used to get on the plane, we always ran to the plane. I mean, we, we didn't even walk on the planes ever. When we got on the plane, we were in running mode. So we'd run up on the plane and be like, ah. and then we'd see the people, it's like, hello. <laughs> and we've had people like looking at us like they were mad and stuff. And I'm like, you don't know what we got to do before we get here. But anyway, um, so when we, would, when we would do stuff like that, my husband always would kind of walk like, almost, almost pimping a little bit like. <laughs> and we'd be like, what are you doing? 
and it's just, you know, but I mean, he made it through life like that. And that you know what I mean? I mean, I can't, on my end, because I have to multitask, I can't do that now. If I try to put on his armor, it won't work for me because somebody will be over here dead. You know, like I had, to, I had to deal with something today. I had to go. As much as I wanted to stay home and not have to do anything but meditate on the word, you know, I would love to just be with Jesus for three days in a row to prepare a message, you know, just shut down and just be with I got so many things going on in my life that it's so, it's so, I'm so busy now that I, I'm running out on the day of the service and having to deal with stuff. So then when I got back and Liz was in the room and she was trying to put my purse together and, and, um, and, and right in the middle of us running, and when I do it, I'm, I'm into seconds. I'm like, Liz, we're leaving. Like, yeah, I, gave, I think I at least gave her the courtesy of five minutes. I said, five minutes, five minutes. You know, so she's putting things in, and I'm grabbing stuff, and we're ripping and running. And then my husband walks in the room like this. Come, walks in the room, then he just kind of stands there like. And then, and then that immediately makes me feel like I got to go into that mode because he's in that mode. But if I go into the mold, then all y'all gonna be mad, because y'all gonna be like, here she come late again. So, you know, we just, we just constantly are like juggling things. So my husband is looking at me like, calm down. And I was like, we gotta go, we're trying to get out of here. You know, and then he kind of backed away and let me do my thing. You know, but at the same time, we're all different. We're just all so different. But I don't judge him for his because his works for him. You know, he's lived a long life. He stayed alive, not rushing and doing all of that. Probably kept his heart rate normal. You know, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm believing by the grace of God that I'm going to live a long life if Jesus tarries. But, you know, I run so fast, I might run right on out of here. <laughs> like, bye-bye, everybody. So, but what works for one person may not work for another. What works for one gender may not work for another. What works for one culture may not work for another. People call black people, they, t they tell us we got, um, what, what kind of time is that? CP, they still call it CP? Ooh, we don't say colored anymore. But anyway, but yeah, they, they give us a time thing. And, and you know, we can't sit there and get mad because most time it's true. But you know what? I don't judge us for it. Let me, let me tell you why I think we're like that. Oh, look at the cute little baby. Let me tell you, see, that's not multitasking, excuse me. <laughs> My life is more into babies and kids and grandkids lately than, than it is any, into, in, into anything else. But anyway, so what was I saying? Multitasking. <laughs> We're multitasking. <laughs> what was it? CP time. CP time. Okay, so anyway, but, but they, say that, they say that our time, you know, we're slow, but, that, but I, I, I've actually thought about it because I think about a lot of things. And I thought about it, I was like, it's not that we're slow, because we're not slow people, we're not slow. We're, oftentimes, we're on survival mode. Whereas, yeah, we're on survival mode because, uh, like, like someone told me the other day, they were gonna get rid of, they are gonna sell their home. And, you know, a lot of white people have come into our, our neighborhoods, and they said, you know, they're going to sell their house, but they said, you know, a million dollars to a black person is not the same thing as a million dollars to a white person. White people don't think a million dollars is all of that. We'd be like, million? Oh, I done died and gone to heaven already. You know, and, and that's not everybody. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We're, talking, we're, we're just talking about uh, general, generalities. Y'all know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about, because, you know, so, all you need is one rich black person to be like, uh-uh, I think millions is, you know, I think on the order of millions and billions. Well, there may be some out there, but a lot of times we have to struggle. Yeah. Our culture struggles because we came in on the territory where we were brought here to put this, you know, to work and to be slaves, but nobody wanted to let us get anywhere in life, you know? So we, we're here, and you know, probably Hispanics feel that way too, because a lot of times they come over looking for the, the dream of America and something better, and they come over and they have to like take certain types of jobs in order to, to function. And You know, I mean, we all have different things. But see, God said, when God created all of us, he said we were all equal. 
And God sees us all as equal. I don't care what kind of things we have to deal with. I don't care what kind of circumstances are different. We're still all equal in God's eyes. So you have to know that. You have to know that there's not one thing about you that makes you less than the next person. You're equal in the eyes of God. And from the beginning of time, God created all of us. Before he created us, he already had laid out a plan. And, and that tape, if I get a chance to show the tape, that's what it, it ta actually talks about, the fact that God, you know, not even just in the womb. He didn't just come up with the plan and when we were in the womb. Before this earth was even created, God already knew what he was putting you here for. And you are the one that will limit yourself because of some stupid lie that the devil told us about each other. And we constantly compare ourselves. And we think, well, I'm not like this person, so something wrong with me. Well, I'm not like this, so I'm not like that. But see, God is like, no, you got to come out of that thinking. We're going to get rid of that kind of thinking. When this is over, y'all going to be like, I am something else. Every single person in this room is going to be like, wow. I didn't know I had all that going in me. Wow, look at the things God can do with me. And, you, and you're going to start thinking about the giftings that he put inside of you. It, because if you don't believe in yourself, how, why are we going to believe in you? Why would we believe in you if you can't even believe in your own self? And so and that's what I want to stir up inside of you guys tonight, to, to find those gifts, to find the purpose Stop comparing yourself. Stop thinking that if, you don't, if you're not like this person over here, there's something wrong with you. There is nothing wrong with you. God didn't create anything and say, oh my, what was this? Every one of us that he created, he said, it is good. It is good. When he said it is good, when he created mankind, he was talking about every one of us. You think he was saying it was good to one person? He was saying it is good because we all came out of Adam and Eve. Eve, actually, but Adam and Eve. So when God said it is good, he was speaking that forth about every single one of us in this room. And all we got to do is take the limits off. Stop seeing ourselves a certain way. Stop looking around and thinking, mm, I'm not quite like that. But, mm, you know, and I mean, women, women have all of that going on because, they, they, you know, they, what's that thing called? They do the, some airbrush or whatever you, when they do pictures and stuff. A lot of times it's not even real. They take these people and they do stuff by the time they finish with the picture and, and, and pushing this in and pushing that over and doing stuff. Then we, we, we humanly can't even make it happen like that. It's not even possible. They had this thing called, what's that thing called that they just had in Hollywood? The um, Met Gala or something like that? Is, is that the name of it? Met Gala? It's a costume, fa costume fashion show thing that uh, the, the Hollywood, the stars come out and they all come out with all of their you know crazy whatever crazy stuff they wanted to do this is their opportunity to do it so at the Met Gala they all got out there and, and you know you saw all kinds of things and I mean we, some things were really weird some things were kind of okay but you just see all kinds of stuff but this is this is people having a chance to be to express what they can't do in real life. You know what I mean? It's like, I can be crazy tonight. I can, I can go somewhere else and do something different. But I, I was looking at one of the girls, um, I don't want to say the name, because this might be on TV, I don't know. But if it does, I don't, I don't want to necessarily say the name, but one of the ladies had something on, and they showed them put, uh, doing her, um, what's that, curse, curse, Okay, I don't think I don't talk on that order, so I totally forgot what it was. But they actually went and had to strap her up real tight, and and her waist got this little. I mean, it was like this, and then and, it, I, and to me, it's so so ridiculous. You look malformed. I mean, maybe that's a turn on for some men, but her waist was squeezed like this, and then her hips came back out. So you got this. Coming out, and then she's walking around like this, trying to, you know. And see, we see all this stuff, and then we think, oh, this is how I gotta try to be. And it's like, no, we don't have, because a lot of it is not even real. And even if it is real, that's not who you were created to be. That's not what God wants from you. 
God, everything about you, God made it the way that he did so he could do what he wanted to do through you during this period of time. And that's the good news. The good news is that everything that you need to fulfill your purpose is inside of you right now. Now, are we doing everything with it that we're supposed to? Not necessarily. So it's still up to us to fine tune and perfect the gift or the talent or the ability or just ourselves, you know, like exercising. And I, I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm an exerciser. That's not, I, I want to be one, but I run around the house. I thought that was exercise. <laughs> I did because the house is big. So, you know, people said, do you exercise? And I'm like, sure, I run around this house all the time. That's my exercise. But then I started getting some kind of um, a, a blood clots in my legs. And at that point, I'm like, what, what is that? And what, what I think it comes from, I don't think, I mean, I don't know the whole thing because the doctors are still trying to find out what's going on. But I really think what, what's happening is when you run around the house and you clean, you move the same muscles all the time. But there are other muscles that if you don't exercise, you're, not, you're still not stretching and doing what you need to do. And so I went to the doctors and, and he told me that the calf in your, in your foot, the, the, this part of it, yeah. when you stretch that part, they said, he said, that's, that's the vein that sends all of the blood up to the brain. That, that vein pumps the blood. And if, if that vein is not, if you're not exercising and, and stretching that particular muscle, then all of the other veins are being affected by that vein not working properly. And I said, now that's what's wrong, because I really thought because I'm constantly cleaning, vacuuming, working and stuff, that I was, I was getting my exercise. But there's a lot of other muscles and stuff in my body that wasn't getting what it needed. So that's why when you exercise, you get to affect the entire body. You know, so now I can't escape exercising. Bummer. <laughs> but praise God, anyway. So, you know, and then sometimes, sometimes, People don't know, we don't, you know, you, you look at the social media and people, uh, so many kids are like committing suicide, yeah. teenagers, the youth, uh, and because they're lonely and because they're trying to fulfill something that they can't reach. Yeah. And most time when people get depressed, it's because there's some unrealistic goal they're trying to reach. Yeah. And they don't understand that that's not how life really is. The more you tune into the truth of how life is, the more satisfied with life you will be. You have to tune into the truth. You got to get all these fantasies out of your head and know that, look, I don't care how many followers you think you have, that is not satisfying by itself. Because those people that are called friending you are not your friends. And a lot of times when people, when people uh, friend each other, it's just a bunch of lonely people trying to feel like I'm important. I want to feel important. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with befriend, oh, friending people, whatever. You know, do what they have to do, but don't get your satisfaction in that. Don't get your esteem. Don't get your, your uh, love need met in that. Because those people can't meet your need because a lot of them are lonely themselves. So they said today they just don't understand. So many kids are killing themselves because they're depressed, because they're not in reality. And God wants us to get into reality. And how can we pass it to the world if we, don't do, if we bought the, the lemonade for ourselves? So we bought the poison. You guys hear what I'm saying? Yeah. We got to snap out of it. The word says don't be conformed to this world, but what? Transform. Be what? Transform. Be what? Transform. Be transformed. So stop being the caterpillar. It's time to be the butterfly. It's time to fly. It's time to, to uh, look different. It's time to be different. It's time to be secure in who you are. It's time to know who you are and, and appreciate what God made you and then finding out what did he put, why did he put that in me? You know, I think I was, I, I looked, um, when I was preparing this message, I looked over, um, over at some of the motive gifts and I was like, what makes us just naturally, the things that we just naturally do, what is that that just, some things just come easy, and then there's some things that, that, that are very difficult. And those are giftings, that's, that's stuff God put in. That's why God says, don't get all prideful about it. I put it there. 
These are, these are gifts I placed inside of you. You know, if somebody gives you a gift, you don't sit there and be like, you're like, this is a gift. You, the person that gives the gift, they're, they're giving you the gift. They're the ones that ought to be said, thank you. Yeah. Like, if I say, here, Shelly, thank you. She says, thank you. I don't say, here, Shelly, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that would be weird, right? Yeah, that would be weird. And, and when I give it to Shelly, Shelly doesn't take it and try to act like she had it all along. Yeah. She takes it and she appreciates that I gave that to her. Everything that you have for godliness, everything, that you, everything that's inside of you that helps you to get up and be who you are every day came from God. So you can't take any credit for it. It all comes from God. And now there are, there are giftings like... Now, you guys know if I say what is mine, y'all automatically say, well, your first one is the exhorter, you know, because even when I'm preparing a message, I have a hard time not thinking about exhorting. I do. Sometimes I'd be like, I'm just going to do this today. I'm going to, but, but my messages still find their way to get back around to, come on, you can do it. I mean, I don't care how I try to. You know, be the teacher. And, and, and I, I like teaching. I think teaching's in there somewhere, but it's not first. But I don't care what. Somewhere in there, I'm going to get back to kicking you in the butt and saying, get up, come on, we can do this. What are we doing? Get up. And it comes easy to me. But then my husband has a prophecy gift, and it's nothing to him to proclaim Whatever the will and purpose of God is, that's what he's going to, he's going to be, well, the problem is you need to get your focus back on the Lord because you, you got off track somewhere. <laughs> and it's just a natural thing to go that, right, that way. Now, I can sit there and go, oh, there you go with your negativism. But you know what? I have to recognize that if God put that gift in the body, it's because he knew we needed it. Because I don't need to stir you up if you need a kick in the butt. Do you guys hear what I'm saying? See, sometimes somebody needs to go call your sin out. Like, you're a sinner and you're going to hell. <laughs> I mean, hell is talked about, I think, in the Bible more than heaven. Not that God wants us to go there, but he sure does warn us, does he not? So we got to get in there. We got to find out what God is doing and appreciate each other. Stop competing. Stop fighting. Stop talking about each other. Stop being mad at each other. Stop judging each other. Stop all this stuff and get in here. Find out what God has for us and get your, stir up that gift. You got to stir it up. You got to stir it up. That has to come from you. I'm going to give you a little bit of Bible now. Let's read a little bit of Bible. Uh, Ephesians 1, I'll start with that. Everybody knows I like that scripture because I read it quite often. Blessed, verse 3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings. So that means anything you need, God has blessed you with it. In heavenly places, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. I thank God that God made me accepted. I thank God that I don't have to strive to be in the family. All I had to do is hear the story, hear the truth, and decide what I was going to do about it. And once I decide what I'm going to do about it, then from that point on, I'm adopted in. Yeah. So I'm in the family now by, based on what I chose to believe. Yeah. Now, what you choose to believe will affect how you act. Yeah. So you got to get your believing straight and don't put all, everything on your actions alone. When you put on your actions, you slip back into religion. So, so when you just, you know, like, I got to do this because God wants me to pray. So I'm just going to pray. Okay, where's my list? And then when you pray your list and you just do your actions. But when you go in there and you're like, you position yourself before God. And you just say, Lord, 
I'm coming before you right now and I'm praying and I'm coming in your presence and I have a list here but I don't want that to be a religious list. I want that to be something that kind of guides me and reminds me of the things I need to cover. But let me be in your presence. And you keep it in the form of relationship. It'll be fresh if you keep it like relationship. When it slips off into religion, it ain't fun no more. Now, how many of you have, your lives been slipping a little bit? It's not as much fun. Because you're forgetting who you are and you forget that you, you have been accepted in the beloved. It's like I, I have a, one of my kids, you know, our kids, uh, I don't want to get all off into the business, but we actually did an adoption for one of them. The other ones, they're, they're our kids, they have our name and everything. But one of them, um, by the time they came along, the adoption process was being pushed. So that particular one tells me what adoption looks like. And... When you've been adopted in, it's, it might as well be blood. It might as well be blood. It's no different. And, and that's how I look at it for, with the Lord. It's like when the Lord adopted us in, we're his. I mean, we're his. So what are we crying about when we wake up? We would like to send you a tape of this entire message. For any donation of $5 or more, we will send you a CD. For any donations of $12 or more, we will send you a DVD. Please write to us at Rejoice in Jesus Ministries, P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047, or call 323-REJOICE. Please mention tape offer number T-I-T-W-1-3-9-5, that is tape offer number T-I-T-W-1-3-9-5. Hi. You know the Bible says that all things are upheld by the power of this word? That means when you put the word in your heart, it will produce life and health to all your flesh. It will also produce faith so that whatever you come up against, you can overcome it. But remember, you won't have the victory you desire unless you make a decision to not allow anything to get in the way of your intimacy with Jesus, nor allow anything to distract you from your time in Thank you for watching Time in the Word. If you are blessed by today's message, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at P.O. Box 47775, Los Angeles, California, 90047. Or call us at 323-735-6923. That's 323-REJOICE. And if you're in the Los Angeles area, visit our worship service on Saturday nights at 7.30 p.m., 1304 Cochran Avenue, corner of Cochran and Packard Street. And again, thank you for watching Time in the Word.